Welcome back to Mrs. O'Gram's Maths and we're carrying on through um, the bivariate data internal for level three statistics and we are up to doing the analysis after we've produced our graph. Now before I actually carry on with that it's really important that um, we first of all look at the graph without any model fitted to it that means no lines applied to it. Part of the standard is that you must do a visual inspection before fitting a model and the easiest way to do that is to produce your graph with nothing else on it no lines or anything first talk about that and then introduce the graph that has the lines on it so let's start with our analysis and i'll keep flicking back up to this graph as we need it and do the writing underneath so the first thing is to look at the strength and the direction of the line so how closely they are those dots are, are um, to each other, whether they follow, they will follow the same sort of line or not. And then also the direction, whether it's positive, negative, or perhaps something else is happening. So with this one, um, we're going to say that that's a reasonably strong relationship and it's positive. The dots are going up to the right and they are reasonably close together. We'll talk about a little bit more detail that we can do with this particular graph later, but the basics are this. Now, to finish off that sentence, you need to have it in context. So we finish that by saying that we can see there's that relationship between the carat and price of these diamonds. That's your very basic sentence um, for this first visual inspection, but there's more that we can do about this. So if we just look back up at the graph, we should then think about whether we think that that relationship is linear or not. Now, when we're looking at the details of this graph, it's better actually just to step back from the graph a little bit so you're not distracted by minute details in it. So I've just shrunk it down to a little bit um, on the side here so we can talk about it and make it a bit easier to put it into the video. So now if we're considering if it's linear or not, that's looking for whether it, we could draw one straight line. Now, I don't think this one is particularly suited to one straight line, um, but it could possibly be two straight lines, maybe here and here they do something different. That would be called piecewise. Um, so we might want to find a way to talk about that. So we can say something like it looks like it wouldn't fit a single linear model very well. Um, and we could expand on that a little bit um, to build this up into merit. Um, I will talk a little bit more about how we could get merit into these sentences. And it's a very simple little trick, um, which is about justifying what you say with why it is that you think that. And you can do this with the sentence um, that starts with, I can tell this because. So for example, I can tell that it's strong because the dots are quite close to each other. And I can tell it's positive because as carrot size increases, the price tends to increase. We can do the same when we're looking at whether it was linear or not. So it looks like the relationship would not fit a linear model very well. I can tell this because the dots don't seem to follow one straight line. Now you would want to expand on that. If you're saying that it's non-linear, um, then say what else you think it might be. If you said it's linear, it would be enough just to say that I can see that it's kind of following one straight line. But now that we've said that it's non-linear, then we would want to suggest what it could be instead. So my suggestion for this one would be a piecewise model. So we could say that up to about uh, approximately 0.4, it seems to follow one kind of straight line. And after 0.4 carats, it follows another kind of straight line. I haven't drawn that particularly well, but you can see the, the intention there. Um, you want a straight line that's showing what those two different types of relationships we can see there. So those individual pieces you'd want to expand on them and say that it's they they are separately both linear but two different kinds of straight lines then there are a few other basics that you should consider under your initial analysis and that is looking at the scatter And for that, you ask yourself these questions, looking for whether it's consistent across the graph. Are there any clusters or groupings that you can see? Is it the same pattern throughout or does it change? So we can see um, on this one in particular, it's got a similar pattern um, for the first part of the graph, but then it fans out and we've got more variation the higher the carrot size goes. And you talk about each of those things. Um, and then finally, you'd consider if there are any outliers. Although it'd be preferable to actually call those unusual points rather than outliers. It's a, a minor little difference, statistically speaking. Outliers um, follow a, an actual calculation to show that they're outliers, but it's easy, it's better to write about them as being unusual points. So are there any 
bits of data that are looking like they are unusual from the rest of the trend. So is there anything that's looking particularly unusual, different from the rest of the data, and what is it that makes it different? So on this graph, I might talk about there being some unusually high valued diamonds um, on our graph and say that we've got uh, three diamonds that weighed in at one carat and they had a particularly high price. Um, we could talk about how much higher they are from the rest of the data. There was one uh, that was at, at about 0.7, uh, say 0.74 carats uh, that also was particularly high and there's probably some other variable factoring into those ones that make them especially value compared especially high value compared to the rest of the diamonds. All right, so that's your basic analysis of the visual stuff. You can build into that and make it a, a higher level um, answer by talking about why it is that you're saying the things that you can do, that you are saying. And then you build that into excellence by going away and researching the things that you're talking about and seeing if there's anything out there that either supports or contradicts the things that you're saying. Uh, next, we're going to move on to looking at fitting a model to this data and analyzing that model. And that's coming up in the next video.